Hello everybody. Uh, this is the beginning of a uh, several video sequence leading up to a proof of the monotone convergence theorem. So we're going to begin by proving that if you have some sequence of real numbers uh, called A, which is increasing, bounded from above, and has supremum B, then you actually know that the sequence converges to its supremum. Now I'm not assuming that you know what all these words mean, uh, so let me uh, let me explain what these all mean. So let's start here first with, with an increasing sequence. I, I mean, this is a pretty reasonable definition we're going to get to here. So a sequence A is increasing. Well, okay, it's not actually the most perfect <laughs> definition because uh, the word increasing suggests should suggest to you that it's going up and well what we are going to actually define is something which is at least not going down um, so the 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 more correct word for this would be non-decreasing uh, but most of the textbooks are going to call it increasing so i i'm, I'm sticking with that notation but uh, understand right it, it's it's a little bit misleading like calling something positive when it should be non-negative um, uh, often textbooks will try to correct this error by then referring to situations where it really is always going up by calling it strictly increasing. So uh, what is the definition? So A is increasing if whenever you take two indices M and N where N is greater than M, right? So this is saying some, some term earlier in the sequence and some term later in the sequence then the term which is earlier should be less than or equal to the term which is later, right? So later terms should be getting at least no smaller. Okay, so that's what we mean by an increasing sequence. All right, next we have bounded, okay? And even really, we're gonna say bounded from above here. So A is bounded from above, bounded from above. Well, okay, again, this is going to mean sort of what it sounds like. It, it means you can't get above some point. So if there exists, let's say some B, such that AN is less than or equal to B for all N. All right, so all the you look at all the terms in the sequence, and none of them gets above a certain value B. Okay. Um, in this case, by the way, we would call B an upper bound. So in this case, B is called an upper bound. Of course, we could also have bounded from below, which we'll do uh, in the next video, uh, in which case then the number that was the bound from below, right, would be called a lower bound. All right, so finally, the, the last word here that we need is supremum. And uh, this relates back to uh, bounds, right, upper bounds. Uh, a supremum is amongst all the possible upper bounds for your sequence. It's going to be the lowest one. So uh, let's see, let's extend this down a little bit. All right, so the supremum supremum, uh, which we call or write soup of A for the sequence A is the least upper bound for A, the smallest one you could possibly find, right? So uh, just to draw a quick picture here, uh, you might have, you know, some sequence Okay, and it looks like so. And what I could do is draw an upper bound, right? So this could be, so let me call it C. Um, and, and it's definitely an upper bound because it is greater than all of the points in the sequence, right? At least the ones we can see. Uh, but you probably can imagine we could draw one that, which is smaller. All right, so maybe that's some D. Uh, and that will be a smaller upper bound. Uh, but you can see we could, we could fit some more stuff in here, right? 
So I could keep going down. And and eventually, right, the, the idea is I should get one which is the smallest, all right? And and this actually takes, uh, you know, an axiom for the real numbers that we're going to be able to find such a, a smallest one. Um, uh, but, okay, so this is something we, we're going to assume here. So there's going to be one which is as small as possible. Now, in this picture, because I have a finite number of points, you might say, well, it just has to go through that highest dot. But imagine, right, if things were going up, but then very slightly going up, right? Maybe there's some sort of an asymptote, right, that it's approaching, and it's getting as close to it as we like, right, but never actually getting up to it. Okay, that still could be a least upper bound, right? So that would be our, our soup, Right, so B, that could be the soup of A here. All right, so it'll be the smallest possible upper bound. Okay, so our claim, our claim here, is that if you know that the sequence is increasing, and it is bounded from above, okay, so it's bounded from above, so we can we can ask what's the least upper bound, all right, that's the supremum, then actually the sequence A will converge to that supremum. All right, okay, so, um, let's let's try to write down then what this uh, this supremum uh, condition is going to mean, right? That we have a least upper bound. So let me draw another picture. So let's say this is B. And when we write down a convergence definition, we know we're going to have to show that after a certain point, A is getting close to B. How close? Well, you get to pick that, right? So somebody gives us an epsilon. All right, that's our closeness. We want to show that eventually we get within epsilon of b and we stay within epsilon of b. All right, well, let me draw something that's within epsilon of b. All right, so there's epsilon, and so down here this would be b minus epsilon. Now you might say, well, we should draw above as well, right? We need a b plus epsilon. And normally, yes, except we know that the sequence is bounded from above by b. We're never going to get above b. So I'm not worried about the b plus epsilon region. All right. So I claim at some point the sequence a is going to have to get within this band. At some point it will have to be above b minus epsilon and below b. What if it didn't? What if a, when you started drawing it, was always down below b minus epsilon. In that case, we would no longer have that b was the supremum. b minus epsilon might be the supremum. It could be even less. So since b is equal to the supremum of the sequence a, there exists some point, right? So let's call it m some integer m, oh, actually let's use a little m because we'll take it at a specific point, such that a sub little m, actually let's move this over a little bit, a sub little m is going to be, well could it be equal to b, that, that's sort of the, the biggest it could be, but it has to be bigger than b minus epsilon. All right. So at some point you have to get an a sub m actually inside this band. Right? If you never get one in there, right? if it only goes up to like B minus epsilon or below, that would be the supremum, not B. Okay. Now, I also know that A is increasing. So once I get into this band, I certainly can't go below the band, right? I can't go out the bottom because from here I have to keep going up. Right? Maybe I don't go up by a lot, but I have to keep going up. I cannot go down through the bottom. On the other hand, because B is an upper bound, right? We're bounded from above by B. I'm not going to be able to leave by going out the top either. So there's no way to get out, right? I'm stuck inside these two bands. All right. So, so let's let's write down just what we said. So therefore. For all uh, n greater than this m, right, or equal to it, uh, we know that the distance between b and a sub 
n in this case, right, so all these dots, is going to be less than epsilon. Right? So the distance between b and a sub n, or if you prefer the other way around, a sub n and b, has to be less than epsilon. Okay. Again, this was since a is increasing. All right, that kept you from leaving through the bottom. And since a is bounded from above by b. Okay, and that that kept the sequence from leaving through the top. All right. So, if we want to formally now write down that A converges to B, we do the following. Define a function N from our domain of closeness to our codomain of eventually, which sends epsilon to the smallest integer, uh, let's call it M, such that b minus epsilon is less than a sub m is less than or equal to b. And if we do that now for epsilon greater than 0 and little n greater than n of epsilon, right? This n of epsilon is just, it's just our m now, right? We have that the distance between a n my n b is less than epsilon. Thus, the sequence A converges to the supremum B. There we go. There's our proof.